Veronica Romney is a 12-year branding and marketing veteran who believes our aspirations drive our actions, and if we want to help our customers make the best decision for them, we have to align our business efforts with their aspirations. In the past, she has worked with some of the world's most respected brands, including Sprint, Marriott, IMAX, Dr. Wild's Vitamin Advisor, and more. But now she's dedicated her work to helping entrepreneurs and small business owners learn how to connect with their customers. She is the founder of My Modern Brand, a branding and marketing education company that helps great people and great companies clarify their brand message, find their unique brand voice, and market themselves authentically. When she isn't busy wrangling her business and two kids, she is an in-demand international Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi speaker with topics including branding, marketing, sales, entrepreneurship, self-education, knowledge business, and more. Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. So, Veronica, tell me about your career and how you got into it in the first place. Uh, Well, when you are the oldest daughter of two Cuban immigrants that started their own business, entrepreneurship kind of runs in your veins, right? And so I knew, I mean, even before I got into college that I wanted to be a business owner and be in, you know, just the profession of business, but I didn't know what exact field I would become, you know, or specialize or niche down into until I started taking marketing classes and a marketing internship. And then I learned the beautiful talent of lovingly persuading someone to say yes to what you have to offer. (laughs) Love that. (laughs) So that's great. So I love the way you said lovingly tell someone. (laughs) Well, I want to emphasize that because I think especially when we're talking about online marketing, there's really, if you think about it, there's no barrier entry. You know, you could run a marketing company from your basement in your boxers with your cousin and nobody would know the difference, right? And so because there's no barrier entry, there's no official certification recognized by Google that you are a master online marketer in some role or capacity, you know, it's it, it's incumbent on business owners to find the sincere marketers that really like genuinely want to help you put your products in the right hands, not just somebody who wants to manipulate someone to buy from you when they really don't need your product. Yeah, that's so true. And actually, so much of marketing is about identifying that perfect avatar and really getting inside their head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I, I think great marketing attracts the right people, but also at the same time, you know, detracts, if that's a word, right? Like the wrong people. It it does. It needs to do both sides of the coin effectively. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's that's a big part of my premise about branding is that a really great brand attracts as many people as it does detract (laughs) the wrong people. (laughs) Exactly. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So how have you grown your network and your brand both online and in person? That's a great question because I I also as like as an online marketing person that knows that there are so many channels. I mean, you could be on Facebook and Instagram, and TikTok and Snapchat and podcast. I mean, there's just so many mechanisms for you to get your message out, especially your brand message or your brand story. So what I identified in myself is I don't want to do a shotgun approach. That is as as a company of one, as a solopreneur with some amazing contractors that helped me. But genuinely, it's like, you know, company of one. I didn't want the pressure to be everywhere doing everything. And so I'm like, okay, what do I enjoy the most? What is my specific, you know, digital creator type? What is my 
you know, preferred mechanism of communication. And that has always been the stage. I love, love teaching. And to me, when you are speaking on someone's stage or your own stage, it's just a bigger format of teaching. And for me, like watching my audience or watching my students, you know, give you the head nods and they ferociously wrote, you know, writing down your notes and they're flipping the papers in their notebooks to write more things down. Like I live for that kind of stuff. And I just went all in. I went all in on trying to get as, on as many stages as possible and to share my message and to help people in the process that creates a whole bunch of content, right? In the process that, you know, increases your followers on your social media channel, you know, uh, channels. It also gives you leverage and relationships that, you know, lead to other opportunities. So for me, you know, in my own personal branding efforts, it's always been speaking, 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 speaking. And how has COVID impacted your speaking career? I knew that was coming. (laughs) Well, I would be lying to you if I said I didn't mourn the life that once was. Like, particularly for me, because in all of my speaking endeavors, I didn't find out until December of 2019 that out of 650 people that applied to join Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi's speaker team, that I had made it to the top five. Wow, that's amazing. And that was December 2019. Now, fast forward, I'm entering 2020 on a rush, on a high, like, oh my gosh, this is my year. (laughs) And then COVID happens and there's no stages. And there is no speaking team, you know, it's still there, but it's obviously kind of on pause. And so everything has now become virtual stages. Where can I speak? What platforms would give me a virtual stage? If that's a podcast, if that's my own Facebook group, then so be it. But, you know, I still believe there's no real substitute for being in the room with people and feeling up their energy, too. Oh, I agree so much because um, there's actually hormones. There's like happy hormones that go between two human beings in the same space. And it's really hard to replicate that online or, you know, even on a podcast call like this. But I I think we've got some pretty good chemistry going, Veronica. <laughs> I think we we share a lot of common values and I think we share a lot of common beliefs when it comes to good marketing. So yes, but for me, it it went from physical stages to virtual stages and anywhere that there is an opportunity for me to share my message and to help someone, I will be there. Well, so that brings me to the next question about taking your business online. And actually during COVID, those of us who were able to shift quickly or as the saying goes, pivot our business quickly. Um, you know, they we were able to hardly skip a beat, actually. So what is the value of taking your business online and how do you do it correctly? That's a really great question because you are absolutely right. I think when it first, when everything first started to happen, there was immediate panic. Like, what is the implications of this on my business? What is the economical, you know, economic consequences of, of essentially being on pause, you know, and, and you're right, the businesses that pivoted, the businesses that went virtual and digitized their product offerings, you know, they win. Those that, you know, still did Facebook advertising right at the beginning got, they were seeing a cost per clicks that were like, you you didn't see that kind of cost of advertising for the last five, six years. It was insane, right? But when it comes to online markets, I think what people don't realize is that when you have an online product, when you take a portion or all of your business online, you explode your potential because you are no longer limited by travel cost or travel time commitments and things like that, you can pretty much serve anyone anywhere at any time. And so if we're talking about the speaking world, what I noticed in particular is the conferences that went from in-person to virtual, they probably like tripled, quadrupled their attendee count because now the mom that couldn't travel because she had the kids at home and it was super expensive could actually still participate in a conference with you from her house with her baby on her lap and still be there with you. So what we started to notice, especially like with virtual events, is that we started to be able to reach people that we we never could have reached before because of those kind of limitations. Just, just, just barely what happened with Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins does unleash the power within on a regular basis, you know, here in Florida and different places. And you have a couple thousand people in a room. 
he did his first virtual Unleash the Power Within and had 23,000 people attend on Zoom. Wow, 23,000 people. Uh huh. So that's what I'm saying. There, it's unbelievable. When, when you take your business virtual, when you take it online, the, you can explode your reach. You, have, you touch customers, you attract customers that you were never able to attract before because those limitations are now gone. That is really an amazing statistic that he had 23,000 people. But, but there again, he's an example of someone who's got such an amazingly powerful personal brand. Yeah. Yeah, well, and it's funny, too, because, you know, one of the things that Tony Robbins preaches a lot is limiting beliefs that most of us are capable of extraordinary things, but we limit ourselves because of, our, the you know, the thoughts that we have the, in between our ears. And yet he also was struggling with a limiting belief that he didn't know if he could convert his very, you know, very powerful, very, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's a very immersive experience when you go to one of his conferences and he didn't know if he could recreate that virtually. He really thought for months and months and months he couldn't until he was kind of like coerced and, and shown by Dean that he could. And he, thankfully he did. He did a Facebook challenge that was like 400,000 people. And then he did an event that was 23,000 people. I mean, that's unheard of. So I would agree. But, you know, I have never been to one of his presentations or conferences in person. I only know him virtually and he's had a tremendous impact on me. He's so inspirational. So he, he's got so much energy and vitality that um, I, I think he actually <laughs> can do just as well or, as you say, better uh, online. Mm hmm. Well, I think what's so powerful about his personal brand, if you, if you want to like analyze him, not so much as a personality, but more as a brand, I think what has made him so special is that he recognizes that he is not the main character of this narrative, that the people that he serves is the people that the story is about. And he says that, like, if you've ever watched his um, I Am Not Your Guru special, his documentary on Netflix, right at the conclusion of the documentary, as the credits are rolling, and the director is kind of having this informal, you know, interview process. And he's asking Tony, like, hey, Tony, what do you think about the people that watch this documentary? Not so much to learn about, you know, your event, but to learn more about you, the personality, the man, the legend, the, the six foot giant, you know, five foot, whatever giant that you are. And without hesitation, he's like, if that is the basis of this film's success, you're in big trouble because nobody gives a sh about Tony Robbins. <laughs> They care about themselves. They care about what can make them change. They care about if that change can be permanent. They care about being alive and living their potential. It, it, that is a heck of a lot more interesting than Tony Robbins. And he is so quick to realize, I am not the guru. This is not my story. This is your story. I'm just going to help you live your best story. That's the power of his brand. I think that's awesome because, yeah, people do care most about themselves and how they feel and how they can perform and how they can live their lives. So he's got it. Uh, He's he's he knows what he's talking about when he he says that he is not the hero, uh, but but he makes other people heroes. So, as you said, there are so many different things that we can do online. Um, how do you figure out what kind of digital products are worth your time to make and create? OK, great question, because I do feel like right now in the industry, the shiny thing is online courses. There's there's a big council. I feel like there's a lot of experts that are like online courses, online courses. Everybody should have an online course. And I I also believe that online courses are a phenomenal way to have passive income and they can be absolutely life and business changing. Right. But should everyone create an online course? No, <laughs> absolutely not. What I, in the 12 plus years that I have been an online marketer, what I have found is that the secret to creating a digital product that generates more revenue and grows your business like never before is actually discovering your unique digital creator type first. Each of us have natural talents and skills, and we have different forms of communication. And what I have found in the marketplace, there's actually seven different personality types, different creator types. So depending if you are more talented as a digital talker, a digital teacher, a digital writer, 
a digital lover. Like there's, there's different digital creator types and the key to finding the best product is actually starting with your type. Because once you know your type first, you then understand what type of content creation is the easiest, most authentic extension of you, the expert. And then when you go to make this digital product, it doesn't take you six months, a year, or never happens. It actually takes you, it can take you less than a week because now it comes faster, easier, better because you're staying in your zone of genius and in your talent. So that is the trick that I have found after 12 years of doing and building almost every digital product that you can imagine sticking with your creator type first and matching that to the product that's best for you. So I must ask, how do you find out what is your own digital type or creator type? Yeah. So one of the things that I did was I, I wanted to put together because I love quizzes. I love assessments. I've probably taken every single personality profiling that's out there. I know my strength finders. I know my Enneagram. I know my Myers-Briggs. Like it's amazing when you know more about yourself, how much it can give you the confidence to, to, live out your strength and not hide it or, or shy away from it. And so I also too created a specific assessment that will tell you which of the seven creator types that you are. And that's something that I was able to put together that has been really effective. Well, we'll put it in the show notes, Veronica, but what is it just in case somebody wants to go to it right away? Oh, so you can find the assessment on abcdlaunch.com. That will actually put you in that kind of uh, pathway to figure out which of the seven that you are. Are you a Tony? Are you a Jeff Bezos? Are you a Donald Miller or a Rachel Hollis? I mean, they're all different. And I actually deconstruct what their types are. And then you take the quiz to know which type you are. Is there an Oprah? Oh, well, yeah, there's definitely an Oprah. That's, I mean, I think that's a pretty obvious one that she's a talker. But yes, there's definitely an Oprah. <laughs> that's what I want to be. <laughs> Well, this is really fascinating. And we're going to continue our conversation with Veronica shortly. Uh, but first, I want to tell my PR Maven Nation listeners about my new book, Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand. And it's available now on Amazon.com as a paperback or Kindle edition. And soon we will have an audible edition that I read myself as well. And the book includes actionable advice on growing your network and growing your brand by taking care of your audience and serving up what they want and need. So we'll be giving away a free Kindle edition of the book if you go to prmaven.com slash giveaway. And we'll be back in just a moment with more from Veronica Romney. Do you want to grow your client or customer base? Perhaps increase brand awareness? Maybe tell your unique story more effectively? Of course you do. But you may be worried that you don't have enough expertise to make that happen. Well, no worries, PR Maven Nation. Let the PR Maven herself, Nancy Marshall, show you how easy it is to get your message across effectively using a powerful yet simple tool, a message map. Nancy's training is often called informative and constructive, well-designed and impactful, with a perfect blend of theory and real life experience. You will leverage Nancy's expertise to create your own message map when you register for this comprehensive online video training course, which is broken down into four easy to understand modules. Normally this course is priced at $147, but for listeners of the PR Maven podcast, that's you PR Maven nation, it's only $29 when you enter the code word podcast during enrollment. It even includes a workbook and bonus content to guide you through the process. So go to prmaven.com and click on the Message Map Mastery course to enroll today. Remember, enter the word podcast during enrollment for a special discounted price of $29. So welcome back. And today we're talking with Veronica Romney, founder and CEO of My Modern Brand. And I want to dive right back in with more questions. I have so many things I want to ask her. <laughs> so Veronica, what is content marketing and how do you use it? Okay, so there's a lot of definitions of content marketing. I mean, at, at its 
purist. It's just you providing, producing valuable, you know, content that serves your person, right? So whoever you feel like you would want to either purchase or read, whether it be a free product or a paid product, you know, you're producing content for their value to help them transform into something new, right? But for me, when I think about content marketing or anything, when you're making anything of value, I think one of the things that most marketers and business owners neglect to do is they don't make the content or the products meet them where they are. I feel like a lot of the times we try to force our consumers and force our followers and our readers into our narratives. And so when I'm working with my entrepreneurs, like when I'm working with my students and I'm trying to help them develop their next big idea or produce awesome content or product, one of the things that we go through and we really in detail discuss is, okay, who is this person and what do they need now? Not what do they need tomorrow or six months from now? How can we meet them where they are? as opposed to trying to push them to where we want them to start. So I think great content answers and approaches people where they're starting from. Well, that makes a lot of sense because I can see how people could be easily easily overwhelmed if they're just jumping into this world. Or there's other people who are quite sophisticated already. And if you provide content that's uh, sort of more on the beginner level, they're going to be turned off. So it's a good it's a good point that you really need to understand your targeted audience and provide content. Exactly. Yeah, that's suited for them. Well, and I think too, there's a difference between giving them what they want and giving them what they need. Because, like, speaking of the Tony Robbins world and the personal development world, I feel like the only people that say the word limiting beliefs and mindset are people that have done that kind of work. But, like, when you're working with an entrepreneur that's struggling with their finances, they're not. They're not saying that their problem is I have a mindset problem. They're saying that their employees are the problem. They're saying that they have they don't have enough time, that they didn't get their PPP funds. They're blaming everything in their environment as to why they're not thriving. And yet sometimes I feel like we as creators, content creators, like, no, the problem is it in your mind. It's your limiting belief. It's your mindset. And they're like, that doesn't make sense to me yet. Can you can you meet me where I am? Acknowledge what I feel like I'm struggling with, not trying to push me into what you think I'm like. Don't tell me my problem. I know my problem. And I think that's a lot to do with consumers today. Like they know their problems. They might, it might not be the problem that you feel like they really have, but you still have to acknowledge the problem they think they have and then bridge the gap to where you want them to go with your, you know, with your content or your products. Right. Exactly. Well, I think if people hear a message that doesn't resonate with them, they're going to just shut you off. <laughs> so that's the key to effective marketing is really knowing your target and knowing their problems and challenges and pre creating messages that resonate with them. So what is the perfect amount of content and value to engage all forms of learners, Veronica? <laughs> okay, so that's a good question. Again, it depends on your person. If you are trying to help an overwhelmed mom, giving them a $2,000 course with 80 modules that will take them five weeks of their life to finish is not going to help an, a woman who's already in a place of overwhelm. So I just want to make sure if you're meeting somebody where they are and you're acknowledging the state in which they are in, if they're in a place of overwhelm, you producing a content that adds to their overwhelm or is not going to serve you and it's not going to serve them. So you have to match the content to where they can actually achieve the content. Because I think one of the big things that's happening in the online marketing space is everybody that is producing online courses and things like that, the average completion rate is like less than 5%. And it's because we're just, there is a point of over and under. <laughs> Either you under deliver or you way over deliver and your person doesn't have the success that they need to have to actually have the the transformation they wanted from your product or your content in the first you know the first place so i like to stick to about the rule of three i like to construct all of my content whether it be a blog or it be a product i like to construct it in three which means it's either three modules three steps three sections three phases there's a three-step journey between where you're starting and where you want to go and where I can take you to in three steps. It needs to be three, you know, sections of the material. I, and I, there's been a ton of scientific studies on this, but like if you give somebody 25 steps, they'll never take the first one. If you give somebody three steps where the first one is the easiest win, 
then they win because they have the confidence to go on to step two. And then they have, you know, complete step two with confidence to go into step three. So I really try to actually construct my content and my products in three sections or three pieces the most. Yeah. I've also found that if you're writing a proposal for a prospective client and you provide three options, it's quite likely they're going to take the middle one. Yep. <laughs> the rule of three. <laughs> yep. So I, I use that on a regular basis in my own business. So I agree with that number. Veronica, how can you use products to strengthen someone's core offering in the marketplace? Okay. Well, that's a another good question. Um, so products should be layered on top of each other. So what I do to strengthen somebody's business, so depending on your business model, right? If you are an online you know, business, then that's an easier model. If you're an e-commerce, if you're a local business, if you're a software company. So depending on your business model, you're going to have different products at the start and at the top. So I think most of us can agree that businesses should have like their core thing. What is the signature thing that you are known for in the marketplace? What are you known for? Where have you planted your stake in the ground? What is your flagship thing? What's the thing, you know? And that's usually a singular thing. Like I'm really, I'm most known for this thing, whether it be a specific online course, a specific software, you're known for your storefront, you're known for this amazing product. Like it's your thing. But then how you support that thing is you have products under it and you have products on top of it. So when somebody's just dipping their toe in the waters, when it comes to a relationship with you as a brand, as a business, are there certain products that can get them there? And sometimes it's free stuff like free lead magnets, free eBooks where, you know, I'll give you the book for free, but you pay the shipping. It can be free downloads or it can be many things. It can be Instead of instead of your first experience with me buying a two thousand dollar course, what if we bought a twenty seven dollar mini course or a thirty seven dollar mini course, right? But it needs to be progressive. So I like to support my businesses by having what I would you know I would call them kind of excite level offers and excite level products to kind of whet their appetite for you know having a long term relationship with me. Then I kind of advance them to experience like the thing that I'm the most known for. And then my customers that are my most loved, my most diehard, my most, I mean, they are just all in with, you know, my philosophy of marketing and they're all in with how I execute marketing. Then there's these kind of elevate offers where, you know, there are private retreats and mastermind and events where you kind of, we go from like, do it yourself mentality to do it with you kind of mentality to like, let's fully immerse ourselves experiences. So I like to, you know, this is, what I'm describing to you is a, a value ladder of products, but basically you are, you are accordion, you are creating a customer journey that gives them different experiences. So we go from a good example of this is like Disney plus to like Disney movies to Disney parks to like, you are an annual pass holder and anything and everything Disney does you buy. <laughs> like It's a progression and <laughs> product offering that you provide for your person that they can stay with you for a long time. And I definitely know people that will buy everything and anything that is branded as Disney. So that's a very good example. So Veronica, is there a book, an app, or a website that has, has helped you and why? Oh, man, I, I am an eternal learner. There are so many books I have read and so many courses that I have taken. Um, but... But I think probably the most, there are probably two things that have influenced me the most in far, as far as like developing me as a brand or me um, as a business is going to be the first thing that I would say to you is working on your signature story. This is really critical. And there's a reason that when Tony Robbins talks about himself, he's always talking and sharing the story of Thanksgiving where somebody came to the door to give them food when they would, you know, didn't have food. And his dad almost turned it away out of, you know, this generosity out of his own pride. There's a reason he tells that story. There's a reason that he donates to Feeding America, right? Um, there's a reason that his big why is, is feeding a billion children, right? Same thing. For me, finding my story, finding my signature story or my signature keynote or talk was really, I think, 
life-changing for me and giving me the confidence to know that no matter what I talk about, no matter how similar I am to another online marketer or someone else in the same industry, I am uniquely me because no one has my story. And I would say the second thing that has really, really helped me um, come to understand just like a human consumer or just understanding, um, you know, just the influence that we have on people and, and, and putting them ourselves in, in their story. Now our story is definitely going to be building a story brand by Donald Miller. That's one of the best marketing books I could probably ever recommend to someone because it very quickly tells you that this is not about you. This is about someone else. And I think just having that perspective as a provider, as a content creator, as a business owner is so critical. That definitely is a really great book. And I would also recommend that heartily. So I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. So Veronica, how can members of PR Maven Nation get in touch with you if they want to follow up and learn more? Oh, I would love to. Um, so you can find me pretty much social media wise everywhere just as V Romney. Um, and then website wise, you know, mymodernbrand.com is where, you know, I, I pour into that website every single week. I'm sharing my newsletter. I'm, I'm giving you more resources and, and tools all for free, of course. And, and uh, that's where you can find me is mymodernbrand.com or V Romney on social media. Well, this has been a really great conversation. I've enjoyed it so much. And I hope to meet you in person at some point when we're all to talk about. I agree. Until that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for your your time. And also, I want to thank everybody in PR Maven Nation for listening today. And I hope everyone has a great day. That's it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you feel that you've gotten value out of today's conversation, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or or whatever app you're using to tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so. I release a new episode each week, and subscribing will make sure you get an alert when there's a new episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation by going to prmaven.com slash nation and clicking join. It's free, and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to add the PR Maven Marketing Minute to your daily flash briefing menu. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation. <laughs>